Hey everyone, Cookies here. This is your quick start Mythic Plus guide for Resto Shaman. Uh, to jump right in, we're going to go ahead and go over our talents first. Um, so there are a few different talents you can swap in between, so I am going to just talk about each of the talents on each of the row and talk about which ones are viable, which ones aren't viable, and why. Uh, okay, so we start out with the first row. Um, Torrent, Undulation, and Unleashed Life. The only one you should really be taking is Undulation, and then you could, in theory, take Unleashed Life if you want some more burst healing. Basically, Torrent is just a passive heal on Riptide, which doesn't really benefit us much in M+, when we need good triage healing, and we need, you know, sometimes we need big healing, and sometimes we only need a little bit. So that's why Undulation is really nice, because it just makes every third triage heal that we use which is a you know like every third single target heal that we use it's going to be a bigger single target heal so it'll help a lot with tank healing because we're going to be mostly putting our heals onto the tank like these spells healing wave and healing surge are mostly going to be prioritized on the tank or other people taking high amounts of damage so having that every third one doing extra healing is going to be really beneficial to just overall with our triage healing and then unleash life kind of does the same thing it's just an on-demand extra bump into our healing the only problem with unleashed life and why you take undulation over unleashed life is because undulation does the same thing as unleashed life it's just every three and it's passive whereas unleashed life you actually have to press the button and then cast the spell so it uses an extra global in order to get the same benefit when undulation doesn't require anything else other than yeah sometimes you might not have it but you know it's on the benefit that it's a complete passive and you don't need to worry about like putting time you don't have to invest time or globals into it in order to get benefit from it and then moving on uh echo of the elements is the only talent i've ever taken in m plus uh this is just because it gives you extra lava burst charges which is going to give you more damage throughput and then also you're running cloud burst totem which we'll talk about in a little bit and again gives you an extra cloud burst totem which is very beneficial so that you're not just relying on one cloud burst to do all of your healing uh, Deluge is going to basically just pale in comparison because it's just a healing talent and an M+. Plus. The name of the game for healers is to do a lot of damage, so you'll typically see if there's any talents that give you any kind of damage increase, you're generally going to take those over anything else. Uh, Surge of Earth, same thing. It's just very lackluster, and it's only a healing talent. Um, and it just it heals the person that has your Earth Shield, but it also consumes charges of Earth Shield, and it just... It's it feels very clunky and it again it only provides healing benefits when we need or not we don't need but Echo of Elements gives us both healing and damage benefits so that just wins out by itself. Uh, next row you can pretty much take any of these. Spirit Wolf is great if you need an extra defensive so bosses like in Sanguine Depths where you get targeted by the charge or there's the orbs that explode on the first boss or the explosion from the third boss, all these kind of things where there's like very telegraphed uh, casts the boss do that do a lot of damage to either the whole group or individual players. This talent is very, very good. Earth Grab Totem is great if you need some extra kiting utility in your group or for things like Spitefuls um, or dungeons where there's just a lot of mobs where you, you may be lacking in slows or something like that in your group or crowd controls and stuff like that. And then Static Charge, I usually take this in Pugs, or if we have more range DPS than melee DPS and we're lacking on like kicks and stuff like that, or if I feel like kicks aren't going to be happening very much, I will take Static Charge over any of the other talents just to al allow myself to have more stuns available so that we can stop important casts. So in dungeons like Hall of Atonement, I'll usually take Static Charge just to help with all the interrupts that need to be happening nonstop. In our next row, Ancestral Vigor is typically the go-to talent. This is just gives a flat health increase to anybody that we heal pretty much with any direct healing. That's absolutely huge. 10% increased HP in Mythic Plus is massive, and HP increases are always going to be a huge benefit just because of how many like you know one-shot mechanics or things that can happen in M Plus that really you can't out-heal. You just either die or have enough HP to live it. Earthen Wall Totem, the only time I really take this talent is if I'm playing with a Brewmaster Monk, and that's because the Earthen Wall Totem, when you set it down, it creates this little field, and as long as the Brewmaster Monk stays inside of this field, it 
pretty much negates their stagger entirely, which is very, very, very nice, especially in dungeons where the tank is going to be taking a lot of like melee attack damage and stuff like that. So it's kind of hit or miss. You can try it out yourself, but I typically like this talent a lot when I have a Brewmaster Monk and they're not running all over the place and kiting. Um, but otherwise, Ancestral Vigor is your go-to. Uh, APT or Ancestral Protection Totem just isn't viable in M+. It has too long of a cooldown, and it gives us the same benefit as Ancestral Vigor. It's just it's a five-minute cooldown and only lasts 30 seconds. So you can just take Ancestral Vigor and have it up 100% of the time with no cooldown or no button press. It's just a passive. Uh, for the next row, Nature's Guardian's great if you feel like you need extra survivability for yourself, if you think you're going to be taking a lot of damage or you just want some extra healing pumped into yourself when you take damage so you don't have to worry about yourself as much. Graceful Spirit is amazing if you want to be able to cast while moving. And Windrush Totem is not very useful, but if you really want to like speed run the dungeon or something, then I guess you could kind of just take this as like a random talent to throw down like as you're running around the dungeon if you're trying to like two chest stuff or just like farm keys or something and you're not worried that you need extra HP or survivability and you also aren't worried that you need to be casting while moving on certain bosses and stuff like that. But typically, Graceful Spirit is what is taken um, in most dungeons where you feel like you can survive without Nature's Guardian because, again, it gives you a damage benefit because it lets you cast damage spells while moving as well. Okay, so in the 45 row, we have uh, Flash Flood, Downpour, and Cloudburst. We will really only be taking Cloudburst, and that's just because of its synergy with Echo of the Elements. We get two Cloudburst totems, and they're just way, way more potent than Healing Stream totems. So Cloudburst is basically where we get all of our healing, like our big healing from, where we actually need an M+. Plus. So like in, you know, boss fights when there's certain mechanics that do damage to the entire group, Cloudburst is what helps us carry that as a Resto Shaman without having to dedicate too much time to actually healing because it's just something where as long as you have healing rain and a few Riptides going, you press down a Cloudburst and it'll just start building up healing by itself. So you're spending, you know, one global... And you're getting a ton of healing value out of it because then when this expires it just naturally pops for a bunch of healing on people and it just it's way more beneficial than these other talents at the moment so uh, and then in the last row we have high tide wellspring and ascendance you mostly would only take ascendance because ascendance again is just another really big potent cooldown and what that allows us to do is spend a lot of time doing damage and then when we need to do a lot of healing we can just use this as a press button, do lots of healing, and still be able to weave in damage while maintaining good healing. Um, while as like High Tide or Wellspring, it would require more effort in order to get the same amount of healing value. Because a lot of the time in the dungeon, you're not going to need to be doing non-stop healing, and that's what something like High Tide or Wellspring is good for, because they're short cooldowns, or they have short action, like, you know, High Tide doesn't take very long to get active, but you're not going to need it half the time that it's ready to be procced and ready to be cast uh, when you when you know when you're about to chain heal. One on the other hand, ascendance is a three minute cooldown, which is perfect because it's like every three minutes you have this huge healing button, and then in the between time when you have ascendance off cooldown, you can focus more on damage and uh, just wait for that cooldown to be back up because the damage patterns typically are like you need one you know you only need to press ascendance once during a boss fight, and it's super beneficial. And it's the same thing with like really hard pulls. You're not going to need, you're not going to get multiple casts of high tide or wellspring off on like a really hard pull a lot of the time. So if you're just comparing it like one cast of high tide, one or two casts of wellspring and one cast of ascendance, ascendance obviously wins out if that makes sense. So hopefully that makes sense for the talents. All right, so let's go over covenant and legendary combinations. So starting off, this is the easiest way I can break this down. It's not perfect by any means. So don't, you know, take it, I guess, take it with a grain of salt. Um, starting off with Kyrian, Kyrian is going to be the highest damage covenant that you can play for Mythic Plus, but it's also going to be the lowest healing. So keep that in mind. And then Venthyr, for instance, is high damage. It's not as high as Kyrian, but it's still very, very solid damage. And it also brings very high healing output to the dungeon. Necrolord is going to be very low damage. And about average healing or kind of medium healing, I guess I would call it. And then Night Fae is going to be low damage also and high healing. So you kind of pick based on what you want out of the Covenant. For the just min-max option, you just want to play whatever everyone else is playing and you want to play what's, 
you know, quote unquote best for M plus, that's going to be Kyrian or Venthyr 100% of the time. Kyrian is going to be the highest damage, but you don't get any healing benefit. Whereas Venthyr, you almost get the same amount of damage as you do from being Kyrian um, by being Venthyr, but you also get a huge benefit of Venthyr having very good healing capability through Chain Harvest. So I personally am going to be messing around with both of them, but I am probably going to be leaning more towards Venthyr because having that huge amount of healing output, it is a really, it's, it's kind of like a, it's a really good benefit to have just for losing a tiny bit of damage when you're comparing how much damage the two covenants do against each other. So Kyrian or Venthyr are your two primary options. And then as far as the other legendary you're going to be running, um, it will probably, obviously this is subject to change because double legendaries aren't even out yet, but I am going to put money on Deep Tremor Stone, which summons a earth elemental and it has uh, earthquake attached to it the entire time. Very good. Even if the Earth Elemental aggroes everything and dies instantly, it still does a ton of damage. And then other than this, the other good legendary that you'll probably see people running is Chains of Devastation. That's another good option because once you have your four piece tier set, Chains of Devastation interacts a little nice, like a little bit with the tier set bonus. Um, I don't think it's going to be as good as Deep Tremor Stone as far as damage goes, but again, if you want to like kind of mix it up or you don't like playing Deep Tremor Stone for whatever reason, then Chains of Devastation will probably be our other go-to option that some people will run. Um, and that is it for Covenant and Legendaries. For Soulbinds, the best Soulbind for Kyrian is Mechanicos, always, because it reduces the cooldown of Vesper Totem, which is very important. And then for Venthyr, I would say Theotar is going to be your go-to because you get this trait right here, Wasteland Propriety, and it will uh, buff your entire group every time you press Chain Harvest. And because you're going to be pressing Chain Harvest almost every like 40 seconds, just under a minute of a cooldown, it's going to be really beneficial to just constantly keep buffing everybody with this versatility buff. So. This is the main reason why you take Theotar and then Mechanicos on Kyrian, you take that because it reduces the cooldown of Vesper Totem. <clears throat> as far as actual uh, conduits that you want to run, um, the best conduits are almost all the Endurance conduits except for Astral Projection, but all three of these are very, very strong. Vital Accretion, Refreshing Waters, and Condensed Anosphere are all very, very potent. So if you can, try to run something where you get three endurance conduits and then for finesse none of them really matter too much but totemic surge is probably the best one because it just gives you reduced cds on all of your like utility totems and then for potency you're going to always run your covenant conduit and then you're going to run swirling currents that's the only other important one for m plus all the other ones don't really have any value in m plus and swirling currents just makes it to where every time you press cloud burst your next redirect heals are going to do extra extra healing cool uh so let's talk about stat priorities really quick for resto shaman so the best way to break this down is instead of telling you you want this much you know haste this much crit this much verse you shouldn't worry about that i am someone who thinks that you should just equip item level and not worry too much about secondary stats and instead focus that like brain power that you'd be using on like building your character perfectly instead on just playing the game really well because gameplay is going to affect your damage and healing output way more as a healer than equipping you know 10 extra haste over critical strike or something so but I will break down the stats so that you have an idea of like what each of the stats do for you as a resto shaman so critical strike is going to give you high damage output and high healing output. It's a great all around stat. Nothing really to go wrong with crit. Versatility is gonna give you the highest damage out of any stat, and it's gonna give you about average, like medium healing output. It also gives you added survivability, so that's a really big benefit. <clears throat> and then we have mastery, which is gonna give you no damage whatsoever. It's gonna give you zero damage output or zero damage gain but it's gonna give you very, very high healing. And then we have haste, which is gonna be probably about like medium damaged and low healing because it doesn't really help your heals in any way. It just helps you cast a little faster. But the best way to think about haste is it just makes your class feel a little bit smoother to play. So what I usually do is I will just build 
um, a little bit of haste, like for instance, I'm running about 10% haste. I just get enough haste to where the class feels smooth enough and it doesn't feel clunky or slow or annoying or like I am not, you know, casting things fast enough and stuff. And then as soon as I feel that, I'll just not really worry about haste too much. And then I'll focus more on like crit and verse because basically as a healer, you want as little mastery as possible. The new season just started, so I'm kind of just equipping high SI level stuff and not really worrying if it has mastery on it. That's why you see my mastery being at like 200. But ideally, the best way to think about it is just equip the highest item level pieces you have and then just try to get rid of mastery with the same item level pieces. So if you can have zero mastery as a healer, it's probably pretty beneficial. But if you feel like you need healing, then mastery is a great stat. It's just that mastery doesn't provide us with any damage throughput and that's what really matters in like higher keys is just how much damage can you do as a healer so again that's the stats broken down hopefully that helps you kind of pick and choose which ones you like if you need more healing you grab some mastery some crit if you need more survivability and you want a lot of damage you grab some verse if your class is feeling a little weird and you want to like fix it up a little bit and you want to just make the class feel a little smoother build haste until you feel comfortable with it so that is pretty much it for the Quick Start Mythic Plus Guide for Resto Shaman. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.